So the next step inside of Formit is beginning to work with the model that we've imported to make it a little bit more usable in several different ways. So one of the first things that I want to do is make this topography model watertight. And what that's going to allow me to do is set it up so I can send it uh, at a larger scale to CNC cutting or at a smaller scale to be able to 3D print the topography. So real simple tool for that inside of Formit is the cover tool. So right here underneath the advanced tool set will be the cover tool. So I'm going to start by double clicking to edit the family that is this topo topographic mesh here. So we're going to double click and then I'm going to launch the cover tool. And this is going to tell me select an edge to be enclosed and click finish. And I'm just going to go around to the bottom and I'm going to select, so I might need to double click one more time. Let's see, I don't think I'm in the right family. Let's go ahead and close this out, exit to the parent group. And let me double click on this edge right here and see if I'm gonna be able to select those individual edges. There we go. So I needed to double click twice. I believe that was sort of, um, a family nested inside of a family. So let's go ahead and launch the cover tool again. And I'm going to select these bottom edges. So one, I'm going to use shift and click each bottom edge. And once I have those, I'm just going to click the check mark and that's going to create that bottom surface for me, which gives me now a watertight model, which is excellent. And that's actually, in a lot of ways that I've done this before, that usually is a fairly complicated process. Um, and Formit has a button for it, which is really handy. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a little bit of this extra geometry that came in with the DWG file. Things that I don't want. Just like that, I'm going to verify that I did not delete something that caused me to lose that ground plane or that base piece so that I have uh, what's roughly the equivalent of a watertight model. At least the 3D printers that we use have acknowledged this as being watertight. So that's something I can be pretty happy with. So what I want to do next is go ahead and apply a material to the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the parent, which I can click on the up arrow, or I can just double click off or single click off. So I'm gonna set up a new material. So I'm underneath my materials window, new material, and we'll just give this the name of site. And what I typically do with um, my site material is I will set it to a transparency of about 50%. And I will constantly be modifying the transparency. I might want to be able to see something underneath or I want to see that top surface is opaque based on the task that I'm working on. So I'm going to set the color to sort of a pleasant-ish light brown, something that's in the background in terms of tonality. And I can paint most of this in the first pass, or some of it at least in the first pass but parts of it I'll need to actually get into that family or that group once again. So I'm going to, going to double click and then use the paintbrush again to get the top surface and the sides. Just like that. And that should be everything. So now as I navigate around this, you can see that it is transparent or at least has a little bit of a transparent quality to it. And at any time I can come back and say, edit this material, change it to completely opaque, or I can change it to completely transparent, all of which I'll be using as it goes along. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that set to about 50% transparent. And let's bring in the satellite photograph, but before I do that, um, I'm going to set this object's properties and place it, give, basically give it a name as an object or as an instance, and then also set it up on a layer so I can turn it off and on really quickly as well. So since it's all grouped together, pretty simple process to do, select it, go to the properties panel and give it a name. 
And then I'll typically set that to my topo layer. Um, these set of layers, C topo and so on, all came in as imported from the DWG file in Revit. So if I set that top group to C topo, if I go to my layers, I can turn everything off. And then within that group, there are certain things I can turn off and on as well. Okay, so we've got our layer set up in our properties. The next thing to do inside a format, even though we've imported the DWG site in, we still haven't assigned it a specific location. And I definitely want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my location button. We'll type in 19th and main, Kansas City, Missouri. Import satellite image. And again, roughly centering the site, which is this parking lot for a new building. Um, very much a conceptual student project, by the way. We wouldn't really do this to a parking lot. And you can see this is kind of a lovely building that we're going right next to. So finish importing image. And if I navigate around this, you can see in having that transparency set, I can actually see my satellite image through the topography model, which is really handy because there are certain things in the satellite image that I'm not getting in that imported file. Foliage, the width of the roads, sidewalks, some of those types of things. Now I need to line them up really quickly, so I will do that. I'm going to switch to my top view. And I'm just going to simply select my overall model. And I'm going to move corner, zoom in to corner. And you can see that those things are now starting to match up quite nicely. Typically for me, I'm always going to trust these lines a little bit before I trust the satellite photograph. But again, more data is always a helpful thing to me. Um, that way I can kind of manage between the two. If there's something that's showing up in the line work that I'm not 100% comfortable with, I can always go to the satellite photo. If there is something uh, about the satellite photo I'm not com quite comfortable with, I can always go to the line work and sort of manage my way between those two different items. Main thing is using both of them is really handy and a convenient thing to do. So let's go back to my 3D view and I can see that I've got those lined up. And if you also notice, I did not do a great big area of this. I didn't try and get the entire area because the further out you go with those satellite images, the lower the resolution is going to be. And so I'm going to keep that fairly close to my site so I can see a lot of details, parking lines, cars, um, some features, street lamps, things like that along the sidewalk that are going to be relevant as the design progresses forward.